Hello guys and welcome to Laravel 7 tutorials. So guys in this video we are going to discuss about what's new in Laravel feature number 2 and that is Guzzle HTTP client. Now why do we use Guzzle HTTP client to get data from external website to communicate with an external website. In this video we are going to discuss about get and post request method and uh, let's say if you want to get data from external website you are going to use get request and if you want to submit your data to an external website you are going to use post request now the question arise why are we going to use gazelle http client or where okay with my professional experience i already implemented a website related to seo auditing tool okay in that website the client said he wants an input field and the user is going to type a url in that specific input field and we are going to get SEO related data for an example the title of the website the meta tags of the website the image and image attributes etc so it is really useful and for that SEO audit tool I used gazelle HTTP client and also curl and two laravel other packages so let's start and see what gazelle HTTP client is okay so I will move to get bash and I have already accessed my project directory and folder right here so what I am going to do php artisan sir that's it okay now let's move to sublime and I will move to let's say web.php right here and now let's make a route simple right here http guzzle client you can use uh, basically a fresh laravel project or already installed laravel project that doesn't really matter all that matter is what is http guzzle client is okay guys now our website basically our project is up and running let's see refresh and it is done now let's make a route route get and let's say response from a website and let's say function closure function that's it now close it right here and let's do dollar response because when we are going to hit any specific route uh, basically any url in this case we are going to get response so let's say response okay right here and let's say http mm -hmm right here http and it is going to be a get request and we are going to paste a url right here okay that's it now let's td dollar response now we have to pass basically a url to get any specific response and for to basically to use http guzzle client what we are going to do uh, it is necessary to call or basically to import a class right here http class i will just rename it from route to http that's it now in this case i am going to use a fake url basically a json related it contains a specific json related data so it is really useful let's just copy not from right here and right here okay to get some basically dummy data i will just copy it from right here and let's just paste it right here and let's remove this one so that we can get all sort of data right here. okay let's see what we have in response and I will move to let's say response is the route and let's see and in this case basically we want to see this website related data you can see this is the body I will open up open it up for you control P for search and let's search client slash response and here it is response.php let's use the body from right here response body to get some data from this specific URL refresh and we are going to get the same thing right here so now you can see we have some dummy data right here basically it contains some fake data and it is in JSON format basically from this curly braid Brace to right here closing one this is a singular object and this is an other object and this is a third object and to wrap multiple objects we use square brackets right here now let's uh, basically this is a bit ugly to read now let's try another method from response.php basically this is a predefined function related to http guzzle client so what i'm going to do let's say let's get this data in array format i'm going to use json simple replace body with json method right here and let's refresh and now you can see we have multiple arrays right here 
that has some specific data with key and value and we have total amount 191 basically 200 starting from zero right here okay so you can see that we have some sort of data right here. okay now let's check other method let's say i want the header of this specific url what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this headers from right here copy and let's paste it right here remove json and place header right here okay let's refresh and you can see we have this specific url related header information like date content type etc you can just check it out on your own okay so i will show you another method let's say if you want any specific data from header section what you can do is basically you can use this header function right here that is going to expect basically expect a string or basically a parameter right here let's just pass it right here now let's say i want to get the content type of that specific url what i'm going to do i'm just going to pass a string right here let's say content i want the content type that's it let's td and you can see we are getting the content type jar set utf minus eight so i hope that makes sense basically you are not, basically i think that everything is clear for you basically it is really simple just to get data from an external website header related information etc etc now let's check this status uh, method what it is going to do it is just going to return if we were successful to hit this specific url or not let's just do this and it is just going to return a status code and let's refresh right here and you can see status is 200 basically it is up and running and we were successful to hit this specific route now let's say if you want to get the url uh, basically the https scheme or basically the url name or the domain name etc related information what you can do is you can use effective uri function i will just copy it from right here and replace this status with effective uri Let's just refresh and you can see we have scheme HTTPS host as JSON placeholder type, type code etc right here. So I hope everything makes sense now. <laughs> okay guys now let's check out other function and this successful function basically is going to return uh, <clears throat> basically this successful function is going to return true or false in simple words let's check it out and let's you can see it is returning true that we were successful to hit that specific route and you can also use ok function let's replace success basically not success basically just replace it with ok and you can see we are getting the result right here now let's see what other methods do we have ok now this is a useful method why because it is related to seo that your website is redirecting or not so what is this redirect basically what this redirect means let me just tell you with an example let's say if you have configured your website as https so this is necessary that you have your https redirection on okay i will tell you with an example let's just check out this url result if it is redirected or not and let's see and the result is false basically this website does not contain HTTPS related redirection. Let me show you with a real life example, basically the real life scenario example. You can see right here, this URL is related to HTTPS, basically HTTPS, HTTPS is configured on this specific URL. So let's say if I want to hit, uh, I will just replace this HTTPS with HTTP and we are going to get the HTTP version of this website basically a non-secure version and you can see right here this means that there is no HTTPS related redirection on this specific URL I'll just refresh you can see right here HTTPS and I will just remove S from right here and you can see again that we are redirected to a non-secure version of this specific website so this means that redirection is off on this specific URL so I hope it was 
helpful for you in the future basically okay and uh, let's say if you are hitting a specific url and there was an error related to client so what you can do is you can apply client error right here and you can also use server error if there was any server error any type of server error and if you want to check cookies of that specific url what you can do is use cookies function simple let's just replace it and right here and you can see we are now having some cookies related data of that specific website right here okay guys okay let's move forward and to psr response and this is another useful function through basically i will just tell you with an example that let's suppose we are not getting any sort of data or we are passing a fake url what it is going to do let's just say basically i'm applying a fake url this url does not exist on google basically so i will just copy this throw function from right here let's just refresh basically replace it and let's just refresh and let's see what we have right here Mm, mm, basically we are hitting uh, external website url that is why it is taking a bit of time and you can see it is helpful basically it is going to re return that this specific url that i just defined does not exist i will tell you with an, uh, another example let's take a post example from right here mm, from right here with the post basically we can apply post request to this specific url let's just replace our url from to do's to post let's say post and let's say i want to submit data what i'm going to do i'm going to create an array an associative array let's just do it in the next line right here let's say user id and i want the user id to be one two three that's it now let's get the response in json format right here let's see what we have i'm just going to refresh right here mm. as you can see that we are not getting any sort of error basically because we are not applying the post request right here silly mistake guys okay <laughs> and we are hitting that external website layout and we have this type of data right there user id 123 that i just defined right here now let's say if we just fake this url a bit let's say basically this url does not exist now what it is going to return let's see throw it is going to basically if i just say json let me just show you the wrong format you can see that we were getting data when the url was right let's say uh, now we have faked the url and now let's apply json to get this data let's see what we have refresh and you can see we have an empty array so this is useful because if you have applied a condition when the array is empty you are going to get failed so the right basically the right method would be to apply a throw method to check if the url is correct or if the url exists what you can do is you can simply check throw so that you can get some exception related error and you can apply your condition related to that so it is i hope that it makes sense to you now basically it is really helpful okay guys now let's just say that we uh, just posted some data and we want to check the basically check on the url that this specific offset offset that i just created exists or not so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this offset exist method simple what i'm going to do is replace throw and it is going to expect uh, basically a parameter and in this case i'm submitting to this i uh, will just basically first correct the url now it is correct now let's check if this user id exists or not when we submit let's say user id to check it 
these are all related to an external website that you can check or get data related to header etc and you can see we are getting through basically this user id user id column exists let's just say something and let's see what we have doesn't matter about the spelling mistake okay so you can see we have false now because this parameter does not exist now uh, this was basically all from this method now i just want to show you that you can get external website title meta tags etc by using curl etc but that is a bit off topic so what i'm going to do i'm just going to show you that you can get uh, basically get html of this specific website let me just show you right here you can get all this in your laravel or in your response variable let me just show you i will just replace this post route with dot com right here and let's take get request this time and i will remove the second parameter from right here that's it simple and nice and let's remove this and let's get the body okay guys let's refresh and you can see that we have all the HTML of this specific URL from right here. You can match it right here. Okay, guys. So I hope this was helpful for you. Okay, so now let's see what else can we do with HTTP Guzzle client. And I will move to Laravel Docs and I'm going to search as form. Let's say if you want to pass the whole form to an external website what you can do is basically you can use as form and apply basically uh, apply the post apply to the post basically as an object property and you can easily submit your form and let's say if you want to pass a file what you can do is you can use attach from right here so this was all from this http guzzle client i hope you guys like the video if you liked it Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you. Take care.